Hello, good morning, good afternoon, whenever you're watching this, welcome to another edition of That Millwall Podcast. Uh, you're joined by myself, Negative Dan, today. Um, a slightly different show, none of the other actual panellists are joining me. I'm joined by Heath today. Heath, how are you? I'm not too bad, mate. Thanks for having me on. I'm looking no. forward to speaking with you. Yeah, no, we're looking forward to this. So for those of you who haven't seen Heath's work on Twitter in particular, he does a lot of um, kind of analysis and a bit of scouting. Um, but, but go on, I'll let you take it away. Go on, yeah, talk about just, yourself just, very briefly. Um, just football content, really. So at the minute, I've got a thing for like up and coming managers, young ones especially, which is really the reason I'm on here to <laughs> speak about Edwards. But yeah, um, I just love talking about football and I know people, I get quite a lot of nice messages regarding the Fred, so it's something that I like doing. Yeah, and I think a lot of Millwall fans have, have seen uh, some of the piece you've done on Joe Edwards already, but I think we're all obviously quite keen to hear a little bit more about it. So um, we're just going to crack straight on with this. So um, he started off the best possible way, didn't he, with that 4-0 victory? Um, what, what have you made of it do, after doing some of the number crunching? Yeah, so I watched it back um, at the time. I didn't watch it live. But I looked at the stats live just to sort of get the feel of is he going to dominate possession? Is he going to dominate the ball? He wasn't necessarily the case. And when he watched it back, it was sort of like that. So, But he did it very well. So when Sheffield Wednesday did have the ball, they didn't really create much, nothing clear cut. And they had balls in areas that weren't going to really hurt Millwall. I think in the first 10, 15 minutes, the players did look a bit shaky and just getting used to things. But after that, I think it was like brilliant. Um, when they attacked, they attacked in numbers. When they defended, they defended in numbers. It was almost like everything was done as a unit. And although um, it's sort of like a basic structure of a four four, four, four two block um, in defend in defence, I thought the individual roles of that system were perfect. So the press, the stepping out, the covering the person that was stepping out, just everything was impressive. Really, you speak a little bit about the possession there. I think. He, do you think maybe Edwards is a little bit possibly restricted by the personnel he has at Millwall at the minute to maybe fully Im- implement the style of football he has? Because obviously under Gary Rowett and going back even further to Neil Harris, we still have players signed by Harris playing in you know, quite key roles in our first team. You know, Maybe the squad isn't quite set up optimally for Edwards? Yeah, quite possibly. Like I said, um, it's sort of hard to go off com- like confidently what he's aiming for just because... He's either been an assistant manager or a manager which was at Chelsea Academy quite a few years ago. So I imagine he's learned a lot since then, which I've seen he has. Um, but right now, like you say, it's not his personnel. It's probably not the team he wants long term in terms of every player. Um, but for, as far as first games go, that is really promising considering he's not been working with the team long. He's probably had to put in a system that's just fit more around the personnel rather than what he wants to use, like he said. So, yeah, I'd say it's very promising. And talk to us a little bit more about that 4-4-2 structure because one of the things that Millwall fans weren't particularly happy with in terms of Gary Rout wasn't just the defensive shape. Obviously, we thought maybe Evan playing a 3-5 at the back was something that was weighing us down. But then also, going forwards, he'd often play with two wingers and a striker, whereas Millwall fans, a lot of them preferred to see two strikers. So talk to us a little bit of the difference you think that made, particularly in the way, not just we attacked, but the way we pressed from the front as well. Well, yeah, so when I watched it back, I was quite impressed with the type of goals because it was all... So obviously, George Shabbos goal was a beauty. It was really nicely hit. There was a goal from a corner, obviously Brook Norton covers it was a nice finish. And was it Harding that was sort of like anticipating a second ball and yeah. just getting there in front? And I think when you see them sort of goals, it's rewarding because there'll be times under Rowett where they wouldn't have expected the second ball. Um, they wouldn't have, George Travel might not have been that high, just little stuff like that, little tweaks. He's obviously give players the freedom. So one thing I did notice when I was watching back is they were one nil up and they had six men committed to an attack, which might not seem massive for a lot of people, but in terms of a team that were under route were based more on like being compact and let's let's be honest, a more defensive sided team. Um it's positive signs, especially because the plays worked for each other. There were one point in the first half where I could have honestly thrown like a thrown a hoop over the full team. They were that close together in structure. And I really liked it. The press, they sort of knew with the trigger point. 
So once one person pressed, they pressed in numbers and they knew when to press, it was lost. And I think it's definitely positive signs when you consider that's only the first game. Massively, yeah. And a little bit about the defensive structure, because one talking point on a show I did with a couple of the other panellists um, last night, we spoke about Murray Wallace at left back, who's a player who's had a little bit of criticism recently, but he had a good game on Saturday. Um, obviously, Mill have Joe Bryan on the books, who's currently out injured. Bryan might be a bit similar to Brooke Norton Cuffey in terms of the way he wants to attack continuously. Do you think that's something Edwards will look to replicate on both sides, or do you think he maybe is better sticking with the little bit of caution that he's got on the left with Murray? I think you'll notice with a lot of good teams nowadays, let me just use Leicester as an example, they do tend to prefer using three natural centre-backs in the back line. Um, and having that fourth centre-back either inverted or in Norton Cuffey's case, having that more licence to get forward and not have to worry about tracking back so aggressively and helping out, which obviously has to track back. But when you've got three cent- natural centre-backs that are going to be back, it's a lot more comfortable for him. So in terms of the defensive structure, um, it depends, I guess. If, if they play the team like, let's say, Rotherham at home, I think it could be a good game to have Brian and Norton Cuffey. But if it's a game that's going to be a bit tighter and you want to be a bit more cautious in transition, then I think Wallace is probably a good option. Or if not Wallace, another centre half. Mm-hmm. And as well, going forward on, on Saturday, again, we had Tom Bradshaw leading the line, who's often been pla- uh, praised by Millwall fans for his work rate. But maybe other than last season, not really his goal scoring capabilities. We've obviously got Kevin Nisbet on the books now as well. Do you think... Um, Nisbet isn't someone who maybe works as hard as Bradshaw. Do you think there's room to maybe have both of them in the team or do you think it's going to be one or the other? And if so, do you think it's going to be Bradshaw who's more suited to the style? In terms of if we're going off Saturday as a whole, I think Bradshaw's shown is more suited because it's a, a team that needs to press and needs to work hard. And Nisbet obviously has other qualities, like he's really good in front of goal, he's shown that. Um so I think there will be a time where he will introduce Nisbet, whether it's both of them. I won't be too sure because you've obviously got Fleming, who's one of, in my opinion, the best players in the league. So you've got to get him in somewhere. Um, do you move him out wide? Maybe not. But like I say, once he, sort of, he has all them players available, maybe he does sort of go with a different sort of system. But for now, it's sort of just sort of understanding what he's going to go with. And which players do you think we're going to kind of see flourish more now under Joe Edwards? I mean, Casper Denor, who was voted fans man of the match on Saturday. I mean, he's been someone who Millwall fans have been full of praise for since he signed at the start of um, the season. So do you think he's someone who we might see develop his game even further under Edwards? Yeah, how about you pronounce his name before I was about? Because I didn't want to butcher it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think... I've, I've we just said... go with Casper, mate. <laughs> yeah, I've said to that, um, a couple of people I've spoke to, I think if he carries on this sort of level, he'll be playing Premier League regardless next season. Um, just because I've rated that highly, there's a couple of players that I think he'll do. Like, I think Fleming will do really well. Um, but it just depends what role he's going to operate him in. Because I quite like him behind the centre forward. But like I say, I think as the weeks go by, and especially now with the international break, I think he might sort of understand, all right, this is what sort of players I've got for me. What am I going to use long term? It works against Sheffield Wednesday, but he needs to needs to know if it's a sustainable shape and if it's mm. going to work in the bigger games against teams that are better on the ball, like you've got your Leicester, your Leeds, all, all the better teams. Um, will it work against them sort of thing? Yeah, so I think we've got, we've got Coventry in our next game and then after that we play Ipswich, Sunderland, Cardiff and Leicester after that so it's not an easy run of fixtures to come into by any means so maybe having that this international break here maybe allows him to get his ideas across a little bit more yeah definitely and I think um, even if all the I'm not sure if some players have won the international break I imagine they have Um, I think we've got about five that have gone in total so not too many but still a few I suppose he'll still have that thinking time himself in the office he can sort of He's obviously seen stuff in training already. He's seen his team play against Sheffield Wednesday, so he'll have the sort of vision now, I expect, of maybe the shape will stay the same, but there'll be slight tweaks in sort of instructions. Um, he did win 4 0, but he'll, he's a good manager. He'll, um, he'll still pick out things that he wants to improve on. He won't be completely happy with the performance. So I imagine um, there'll be a few changes. 
And do you think, I mean, obviously we've just mentioned Casper there. Um, we'll come back to that in a minute because I thought something you said there was quite interesting. But just on other players that you think might be players that flourish, um, you know, let's let's start with the players that, that played on Saturday and then maybe we can have a look at some of the, the wider players in the squad. But, you know, I think it's off of my head when I think of someone who's worked in the England set up, been in the Chelsea youth set up for a long time, probably Brooke Norton Cuffey from the players that started. Um, you've got to favour him to, you know, I mean, he's been very good so far, but you'd favour him to develop even further now, wouldn't you? Yeah, definitely. And I mentioned this before, he has, um, he was key in sort of Terry clamped his development when he managed Chelsea. Um, he did actually play a free back in the game I watched back against Plymouth in, I think it was 2018. So we were going back quite a way to try to find some footage of him actually managing. But his full-backs, uh, in that game, his full-backs were up and down the pitch, he let him attack. He wanted them to have freedom. So that's why I'm thinking when Joe Bryan's back, will he go back to a three? I'm not sure. Um, but he's definitely comfortable with playing that if he thinks the personnel's right. But in terms of more uh, players, so you've obviously got Casper, I think he'll do well. You've got Norton Cuffey, who I think he'll benefit from having a young manager who's positive. Um, trying to think who else I think will sort of flourish underneath. Well, you, under I think a key talking point for Millwall obviously a lot of us think we are going to try and have uh, a bit more of the football. It has probably been the centre-half, Jake Cooper. I think he has, you know, maybe th that's the reason why he's still at Millwall because he has a lot of praise from champ other championship fans, but maybe just isn't quite as good on the ball. Do you think we might see a little bit more from that side of his game? Yeah, I think um, I've always liked Jake Cooper. Um, but like you said, maybe not his distributions as high level as some um, centre half in championship, so maybe it's something that well, it can definitely be worked on, and I, I imagine Edwards will work closer with him if he wants to dominate more of the ball, which I imagine he will because, I mean, I say he's a young manager; he's been working management for quite a while, so he, he knows ways to win games without the football with the football. So it just depends what he thinks is best for Millwall um, and best for the personnel he's got, because you've got to remember these are his players, and I imagine there'll be a few brought in in January. Um, but in terms of having more of the ball, I mean, I hope so because I love watching teams that are really good on the ball. I'm really good without it. And I think, in terms of if you look at the wider squad, two players, again, two of our younger, brighter players that will probably be rubbing their hands with joy that Edwards is in is Ida Maku and Roman Esse as well. Well, yeah, what, uh, I think that was noticeable things. Um, what I did notice that they came on with. Although he was obviously winning, they came on with time and they weren't just getting a two or three minute cameo and expected to do something. They were getting like 25, 20 minutes. And I think that's brilliant for players of that level who can impact games. So in the tighter games, bring them on in the 70th, bring them on the 65th. So while they are still learning, they are still quite raw in some areas, they can still impact that game and make things happen. I mean, yeah, we saw it at the start of the season in the first game. It was Rowett almost had a case of misidentity by, by bringing on um, Amaku and Essa, and they went on to score the winning score the winning goal with Essa getting it and Amaku getting the assist. So, you know, these are good young players. It's just a case of, though, you don't want to throw them in straight at the deep end, do you? No, definitely not. And I think, like we've been talking about, his shape and what shape we think he might settle into, I think them two players could make that a bit easier for him to... Uh, when he feels like they are ready to be starting games and having that pressure. But right now, I think he's trying to ease them in. I think it's the right thing to do because there's a lot of times where some young players are mismanaged and chucked in expected the world straight away. Um, so I think in terms of managing them correctly, but I think in the long term, they'll be part of the Millwall front line. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I'm just going to go back to what we said earlier about Casper, because you said you'd like to maybe see him play a little bit further forward just behind the striker. But we've all we've already got Fleming there. And I think a lot of Millwall fans feel that that's potentially going to be Roman Essay's position longer term when he, you know, gets started more games. So, you know, nice problem to have, but how do you, you know, how do you keep all of them happy if you think that's their, their best role? Yeah, sorry, I meant Z, I meant Z and Fleming. Oh, okay, striker, yeah, yeah. Rather than um, Casper. <laughs> Um, no, I, it's, I am it's, a big fan of Casper, but I it, did meet Zian. It's, it's still, though, a nice problem to have, isn't it? Having someone like Zian, who, you know, I rate him highly. I do think, you know, he's 
maybe hasn't quite hit the heights we wanted so far this season, but he still, I think, is one of the best players in the league. And then you have Essay, one of the, you know, I might be slightly biased here, but one of the most up-and-coming players in the league. It's a nice problem to have. And, you know, you have to question how do you maybe get them to into the same team if Essay becomes ready to start games later this season? I think it's a happy problem for the fans to see too because it's sort of like you've got the attacking talent so there's not really much from stopping us from having a good attacking team. Um, so Obviously, every fan wants to see brilliant attacking football. It's what we go to watch. Obviously, we want the result, but we don't want to be watching our team defend for 90 minutes and just defend behind the ball and surrender the ball to the other team. So I think, it, like you say, it's a good problem to have. And them players, I imagine they'll be sort of finding the best position. I think even in the international break, now we're sort of looking sitting down and having a look where he thinks best. How can he get the best out of Fleming? Because he'll know that how good he was last season and maybe he's not hit the heights this season. But if he can get him into positions where he can make things happen, whether that be goals or assists, he's got a really good player there. And what do you think the squad needs in January? I mean, we've still got three loan spots left and I think a lot of Millwall fans think, given Edwards' contacts, we're going to be utilising them. Is there any players or positions in particular you think Mill should be looking at? I, w- I, w- I would have said Bashi Humphries, but he's already gone on loan to Swansea. Um, one, because he's a Chelsea youngster. Is and that the centre-half, so, sorry? Yeah, he's a yeah, good I... centre-half. I think it'd be the perfect... He had a very good of... game against us for, for Swansea. Yeah, I think it'd be the very good sort of signing and it to be possible because one, he was looking for a championship loan and two, if Edwards would have tried to pull it off, they would have said, yeah, I imagine. And another thing as well, even though it's only a minor thing, probably for that one, the geography works quite nicely as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, but in terms of other players, I'd, like I said, Chelsea have got a lot of good youth players. Are, um, and it's not even just Chelsea, he's worked with people at England levels, uh, the under 20s. He's worked at the younger levels with players that are probably a lot older now, I'm ready. So I'd like to, I'd like to see a ball playing centre-half just to have that depth there too. And I, I, I'm pretty happy with it like in terms of centre forward with Bradshaw and his back feet. You've got two good players there. It's just about keeping them both happy, really, and trying to find a way you can get them both involved. Keeping them fit, keeping them happy, keeping yeah. them scoring, really. So, yeah. um, But it was nice to for us to see football being played, you know, it's what you said earlier, 10 yards high up the pitch, because it's something we didn't see too much under Rowett and the stats were backed up as well. Edward said he wants the team to be very fit and in that game, that was the second furthest amount of um, kilometres we'd ran as a team so far this season. Yeah, it was great to see because like I say, when I was watching that Chelsea game back in 2018, I obviously knew a lot of things that had changed for this Millwall team because years have gone by. But the first thing I noticed was the energy of the players. So the press straight away, when they lost the ball, they wanted it back. Um, sometimes it was a bit too aggressive and they get played through. That's what I think in the weeks to come, they'll want to manage that where they get to the trigger point spot on because if you're playing against the better football insides um, who want you to press, who want to bait the press, if, you, if you're if you overly pressing aggressively, they're just going to play through you and they're going to have fun. Um, the teams like Leicester and Leeds and Middlesbrough, them sort of teams. So it's just about getting the balance right. But I think he definitely will... Um, He's shown, I mean, he's coming in one final in his first game, so you can't really criticise anything he's done. But it's just about seeing, one, could it be sustainable? And two, what little tweaks will he make? And so far this season, the bane of Mill's life has been their home form, because in terms of away form, we're fourth in the league. But home form, we're 22nd. Most Mill fans are used to it being the other way round. Do you think the way Edwards played at Sheffield Wednesday would help to at least get the fans back on side, get the team more behind the players? Because under Rowett, it was just, you know, and under Barrett as well, particularly in that Southampton game, it just was so flat in the stadium for a sellout. And it just felt a case of um, when, not if Southampton were going to score that goal that they eventually got. Yeah, well, I described his way of playing as a perfect for home fans in terms of if it is a bit flat and you see a player running and they make a big tackle or something like that, it automatically gets the fans like, yeah, you love to see that. You love to see a player like want to lose a ball, win that ball back and sort of have that intensity about the game. I think his play style is sort of perfect for that. So I think it's perfect for the fans to be up for it. 
And like I say, it is a tactical shift for Wednesday. You noticed it quite a lot in terms of committing bodies forward. If the first ball didn't um, reach a destination, the second ball you'd be competing for it and you'd make a chance off it. So it's important to realise that not everything's first ball. And I think he's getting his place to do that, especially with the Harding goal. Um, and even the Norton Cuffey goal, I'm pretty sure with the play room, I think he played a poor pass and he won it back. Yeah, it was, uh, it was SA, yeah. Yeah, he played a poor pass and he, he won the ball back and that came to the goal. So it's about what you're seeing in the Sheffield Wednesday things were getting the basics very perfectly right, which is a bare minimum. So I expect, I expect in the future weeks to see more sort of freedom in the attacks and stuff like that. But for now, it's definitely a positive start. And we're going to, we'll wrap this up shortly, but just the last question I want to throw at you for now. Um, Joe Edwards has done an interview with Southwark News, one of the local papers that the, uh, the Mill managers do. And he said that he wants the team to be kind of finishing between 8th and 12th this season. Now, I know predicting the championship is a near on impossible task, but do you think that is realistic given the slow start? Yeah, I think it's also clever because I also think the team he's got and the way he plays is, especially with his championship season, how inconsistent a lot of teams are. I think, like you say, I think it's very hard to predict. So all it really needs now is Millwall to get a few wins on the bounce and the backing among it. So it's just about, I think eighth and twelfth is fair. But to be honest with you, I don't see any reason why they can't even finish higher. Well, it might finally break that top six barrier. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, last season was, it was horrible. Just, <laughs> yeah, that's always <laughs> the best way to put it. But uh, was it Blackburn that cost you on last day of the season? Yeah, we still don't speak about it. Yeah, not with negative, Dan. <laughs> no, definitely not with me, mate. Um, well, listen, thank you very much for coming on. Um, if you want to just shout out your social channels now um, and everyone else can go out and find Heath's work, it is really top draw, by the way, so I would really recommend checking it out. So, Heath, take it away, mate. Yeah, I appreciate that, Dan. Um, yeah, so it's just HE Football one on Twitter. And I think it's the same on TikTok. But like I say, I'm making more videos on TikTok recently and hopefully more to come, but... You'll catch all my friends on Twitter. Cool. Yeah. And thank you very much for joining us, Heath. And, uh, you know, hopefully we'll have you back on for the end of season promotion party. How's that sound? Yeah, it sounds perfect. See you. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Um, and as always, drop us a subscribe and um, follow us on social media and all the usual things. And we'll hopefully have another video back for you lot next week during the second week of the international break. But until then, come on, you Lions.